Hello, I'm Deborah Cheatham, and wherever you live across this vast continent of ours, I'd like to begin by paying my respects to the elders and the ancestors of the country you live on. I'm speaking to you from the Eastern Kulin Nations, and the Bunwarang people have poured their knowledge and their song into this land for more than 2,000 generations. Just before we begin the rehearsal, I'd like to thank you for joining Classic Choir and for singing my new carol, Christmas With You. I'll be singing along with you and I can't wait to hear the final performance. We want you to sing your hearts out at home. Don't worry if the neighbours can hear you, they might want to join in. And you can just think about all the members of Classic Choir who are singing Christmas With You all over Australia. If you have to miss a rehearsal, no worries. Classic choir isn't as strict as most choirs need to be. You can join us online anytime on the ABC Classic website. Thanks again for being part of the Classic Choir. I hope you enjoy the rehearsal and I look forward to singing with you. Hello and welcome to this online rehearsal for the Classic Choir. It's so lovely to have you here, all around Australia, wherever you are in the world. It's just, it's just a very, very special thing, I think, that we're creating here in Australia. And possibly this is going to be something that we will remember, I think, for the rest of our lives. My name's Ed Ayers, by the way, and I present Weekend Breakfast. And I'm delighted to be joined in this rehearsal by the conductor, Ben Northey. Ben, hello, how are you? I'm great, Ed. Great to see you again. How's things going we up there in Brisbane? Look really good. And Ben, I, I have to say, I personally am not much of a singer. I, uh, okay. I suppose I express myself musically in in other ways, you know, viola, cello, whatever. Um, but I, I just can't wait to sing in this choir, to have that feeling of us creating this piece of music together at such a great distance. I think it somehow is going to make it even stronger. I think so. I mean, that was the, the message that was written in the beginning of this beautiful carol that Deborah Cheatham's written, was yeah. dedicated to everyone who has been parted from those they love in this year of loss and chaos. Uh, yes. And so it is exactly that. It is bigger than uh, a, a singing project. It's something that brings us all together and lets us share the joy of Christmas and the joy of music together. Ben, what should we have? So uh, the music, uh, what else? I've, I've got a pencil. That's right. The way that the way that this is structured is that we have the sheet music. Yep. And I've said to people, you don't need to be, uh, you know, expert singers to participate in this project by any means. It is an advantage if you do read music. But you also have the resources of the audio recordings. Yeah. And so online you can download a full version of the orchestra and pre-recorded choir performance, which you can listen to. But you can, you can also download pre-recorded versions of just your voice type. So soprano, alto, tenor, bass. And so it's a matter of working out which of those types you are uh, and then isolating that part. And you can learn it by ear. If you if you have good ears and a good me musical memory, you could actually do it without the sheet music if you chose to. Yeah. So the challenge is just trying to unite everybody, bring everybody uh, to a to sort of a unified interpretation of the piece so that the, the little details are still kind of paid attention to. We finish words together. We breathe in the similar places at least. <laughs> and we're, we're aiming for a cohesive whole performance once we've put it all together. Ben, you're the man. And and also, Ben, I was chatting to uh, my friend Jan the other day, and Jan was listening through the different parts. And uh, Jan has a, a reasonably high speaking voice, but she was listening through the different parts, and she believes that she's a bass. So I just wanted to also <laughs> just confirm that if you uh, perhaps, you know, that there's no gender specific roles, that if your voice nope. does tend towards very low but you know you have a high speaking voice it just doesn't matter or the other way around well, whatever feels comfortable yes whatever feels comfortable Absolutely. i mean if you can sing a top c if you can sing a high c up there you're probably a soprano <laughs> that's the only thing i would say uh if you can sing a low e then you're probably a bass uh, yeah i have to say so, ben i can't you know, even hear are... that high c so uh, i think that's that's not going to happen <laughs> so higher than dogs can hear even <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> well should we do some warm up 
Yeah, sure. Right. Okay. Right. okay. Um, well, we had we Greta gave us a lovely warm up which involved oh, um, buzzing lips together and doing sirens, which was very handy. Yeah. But a more traditional one is running up and down a scale of five notes, uh, starting on a C. We would normally go on, on just la. La, 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 or even just ah. And then you would go up a semitone each time. So if we start there, starting on, on a C. Ready, and. Up we go. I'm going to bail out any moment now, but I'll keep going. That's probably enough before we do any injuries, but um, that's a typical choir warm up to get us started. But there's nothing like just sit, having a good old sing along, too, Ed. Absolutely, and uh, a little bit of hydration. I mean, it's 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 getting towards beer o'clock, isn't it? it doesn't have to be, uh, you know, alcohol, non-alcohol. Is there anything that's, that's bad right. for our vocal cords? A beverage of choice is encouraged, and normally Wonderful. choir rehearsals involve baking of some description. There's usually at least one or two very very keen bakers, and uh, I can tell you. In lockdown in Melbourne, everyone's a baker now. We're all bakers <laughs> down here. So if you want to eat some pastries, go for it. Excellent. Well, I'm a big fan of the boiled fruit cake. So if anybody's got one of those, please pass me a piece. Thank you very much. Perfect. So, Ben, um, shall, we, shall we sing a song to warm up before we get tucked into the main rehearsal? Yeah, let's do it. It's something familiar. What have you got in mind? Oh, look, I mean, you know, we're getting ready for Christmas. My favourite Christmas carol, Heart the Herald. What do you think? Great idea. All right. Perfect, perfect place to start. Okay, let's do it. Oh, All right. Ben, look. The Habsters joined us.
quite heard it as a samba before. <laughs> that's a great arrangement. Lots of fun to sing. Thanks for singing along. I think that's the best Hark the Herald Angels I've ever sung. Well, maybe some of the high notes are a bit dodgy, but... It's one of those ones that's just fun to sing, isn't it? You know, you know I feel like we, <laughs> most of us know it well enough that we can give it a good bash in public. You know, it's not intimidating too much, at least. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. And and I guess that's really key, isn't it, for enjoyment in, well, in anything and, and especially in music to just relax and not worry about what anyone's thinking. I mean, I think that's actually one of the great advantages of doing rehearsals online that, you know, you can just go for it. It doesn't matter what sound, what notes come out, just go for it. And, you know, it's like that thing of um, the first pancake out of the pan that... You know, the, the first one, it's perhaps not going to be perfect, but it has to happen for the rest of them to come out really nicely. Exactly right. Exactly right. I've always thought the number one rule of public singing is to sing as loud as possible. I'm not sure if that's entirely true, <laughs> but it's a good place to start. And then we can sort of refine oh. down from there. But lose your inhibitions Absolutely and jump then. into the deep end. That's my advice. I love it. I love it. So that's going to be my attitude in this <laughs> rehearsal. And for you, who, if you've just stumbled across this rehearsal online and you're thinking, hang on a minute, what's going on here? You're joining a classic choir rehearsal. This is through ABC Classic here in Australia. My name's Ed Ayres and I'm joined by the conductor Ben Northey. And this is one of our online rehearsals for a specially commissioned Christmas carol composed by Deborah Cheaton. A.O., by the way, I think that that's something to really celebrate with Deborah. And this is a specially commissioned Christmas carol for this very, very difficult year. So welcome if you've just joined us. And in fact, you've joined us at the perfect time because, Ben, we're now going to head into a bit of a sing through. So what's the plan well, right. for the rehearsal so for today? Apologies to those people who are just joining us for the first time. We did have one rehearsal uh, yesterday with Greta Bradman. And we went through verse one with me at the piano, singling out the lines. We went through what we're calling the chorus, which is uh, bar 46 into bar 47. And we got up to basically to the key change, which happens at letter B, bar 58. So what I thought we'd do yeah. is uh, sing through up to that point. Don't worry if it's, if it's too hard. I will come back to the second verse uh, and we'll then have a look at the key change. We'll talk a little bit about what we've just sung. But I thought it'd be good just to sing through that much before I do any detailed work. Ben, I'm ready.
Ben, I found some of that really hard, especially the pitching, um, just going into the key change uh, from about Yeah, that's 52. tough. And we're going to yeah. zoom. We're definitely going to zoom in on that. Yeah, so good, I'm not good. expecting it to be perfect. That's what This is what rehearsals are for, Ed, you know, to, to work out the spots that are difficult yeah. and then to zoom in on them. Mm. Um, but, but just to remind everybody, the things that we were looking for, particularly in that first verse, were the, the words that end in the letter T, putting those on the rest, for example, bar 21 for the basses, altos, sopranos, just ending words in the right place. The word night at the end of bar 26, putting the T of night on the downbeat of bar 27. Mm. Those things all help very much, uh, you know, uh, us unifying the performance. Yeah. So, but Ed, why don't, we, why don't we then have a look at verse two? Verse two is a slightly emptier verse than verse one. It starts at bar 31. The basses don't do anything for a few bars. Yeah. But the sopranos and the altos begin in unison on this F sharp. So if I just count that in, we'll have a sing along this uh, with this for sopranos and altos, and then we'll add voices as we go. So this is bar 31, starting on F sharp. Ready, and... Two, one, then the tenors join. and altos in octave unison. All right. Uh, so that, that section there is quite simple for at least tenors and altos. Now, when the basses and the sopranos join at 39, Ed, this is your note here. This... Oh. So if we just sing that line going up in semitones right. from bar 39. So ready and... One, two, one... We're going okay so this is the advantage of being able to sit you know at a keyboard instrument or or at your um, cello or whatever you're playing and just pick out those notes to get them in your ears and get them going over and over again in your in your head and just zoom in on those four bars and and you know until they really sit yeah, Ben. And then you could try it with the recording. Yeah, and Ben, if you don't have an instrument, if you don't have a keyboard or um, somebody handy around with perfect pitch, uh, what can you do? Are there apps that people can use to make sure that they're singing at the right pitch? What What can you do? Yeah, you, on any mobile device, you can download a little mini piano app ah, um, right. that just will let you play, you know, an octave of notes on the piano. Yep. Um, you know, most computers have that as well. But in this case, if you are playing the audio back, you could li you could literally just listen to those four bars and go back to that spot in the recording and kind of loop them yep. until they're they're uh, set into your mind. Yeah, yeah. So I should also just run through what the sopranos are doing at that point in time at thirty nine as well, which is very similar to what the basses are doing, but an octave higher. So the sopranos will will try that together. Ready and. And then, and that's quite simple as well, similar to the bass line there, but just slightly different. And then we have our altos and tenors play, singing the melody at bar 43, which goes ready and. And then we're into our chorus. And we, which we rehearsed the other day. Yeah. Now, that so that you know may take a little bit of work but the difficult bit as you pointed out is into letter b is into this key change and so let's work out a strategy to try and try and make this a little easier let's look at the bass line first um if we're if we're uh, looking at beat four of bar 53 and suddenly okay so that goes and suddenly the summer days are here bringing Christmas. So forgetting about what happens at letter B, if we just have a sing of that, so after two beats, starting on that note and, this is the A. So ready and. And, and suddenly the summer days are here bringing Christmas. And then hopefully we can hear that we're headed to E flat major, you know, a 5 1 cadence, and that gives us our note. Can you find your way home, Christmas Eve? And, and that brings us into letter B. 
So what I might do is just run through the other parts uh, as well, just from that same place, the pickup to bar 54. So the tenors are singing again an A. And suddenly, we'll try that. Ready and. And suddenly the summer days are here. Oh, oh. That's ben, a particularly nasty bit of writing. Ben, that's so hard. Can we do it again? Would you mind? It's kind of Pavarotti-esque, isn't it? It's this seventh going from the G to the F. And then back down to the D. Yeah. So that takes courage. That You do have to um, take a leap of faith there. But we'll try it again from and suddenly. Ready and. And then we're in do. And I guarantee you after those few bars are negotiated, the rest of it is much easier because we're in one key. Uh, so I think that's probably the hardest part of the four is the tenor part in that spot. Yeah. Uh, so the altos that are doing a, a similar thing up the octave, uh, but just not jumping around as much. So, and suddenly for the altos, ready, yeah. we're into that next section in E flat major and the sopranos finally which they always have kind of the 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 easiest in in most cases because it's the most melodic so it's kind of sticks in your ears a little bit easier but they've got a leap of their own in bar 57 which sopranos I'm sure will embrace and enjoy <laughs> and um, sing out and take all the attention yeah. you know which is what they what they do so well so <laughs> let's go into bar 54 you're so winning a lot of friends at the moment Ben so, and suddenly, sopranos, here we go. Ready, and. All right, and the sopranos end up being the icing on that very beautiful cake of four-part harmony, yeah. Ed. So, you know, that's probably the hardest part of the piece in many ways in terms of just getting it in our ears and negotiating that key change from from D major to E flat major yeah but once you go over it a few times it does actually stick in your mind yeah and Ben also um that that particular type of key change is used <laughs> my voice has suddenly gone all all over the place that particular type of key change is used quite a lot isn't it in a lot of pop music um absolutely you know just that well, rise it's exactly of the half what step. we were doing it's exactly what we were doing yeah. when, in our warm-up and then we're going up to, and it just gives everything a lift. A semitone yeah. makes all the difference. And all of a sudden, you know, it lifts our spirits even higher. Yeah. It's a and very clever device. Ben, one thing that I find really, really difficult is singing high. I mean, I, you know, low notes, they, they're relatively easy. But going up high, what can we do to help? Is there something we can do with breathing, with how we stand, how we sit? Should we have another glass of wine? What can we do? All of those things probably would help. Uh, look, you know, not being a great a great singer myself, yeah. the singers that I have worked with, I have to say they, they never force the sound. Yeah. And and it's an extension of their speaking voice. Don't try and over sing. Okay. Uh, singing high requires control. Mm. It's not always going to work. Uh, but but don't force. Yeah. That try and try and let the sound come. Uh, in an easy way yeah. and don't don't try and sing too loudly and I think that that way you end up getting a better a better tone as well yes uh, but it's it's you know this is the difficulty of singing our voices are unpredictable things <laughs> and don't, don't be uh, you know don't be concerned if all of a sudden you're cracking notes yeah. and uh, even you see a lot of singers yawning it's not that they're bored it's just <laughs> that's what happens when you don't breathe normally as you would, you know, walking around the house. It's a very different kind of thing and you need more oxygen to do it. So yeah. all of those things are normal. Yeah, so sing freely. It, uh, don't don't force so. it, but let it, just let it go. Let the let yeah. the sound come out. Support with the diaphragm. Make sure that you, you're, you know, using a lot of support and, and uh, you know, helping the voice as much as you can. But don't think in a tight 
kind of constricted way yeah. in your vocal cords. I think that's probably the, the thing I've yeah. noticed from the great singers that I've worked with. All right, Ben, I, I feel like I've learned so much in this rehearsal. I feel that I've really learned how to sing, how to be relaxed, not to worry about the high notes, not to worry about loudness, to be careful with my consonants, particularly T's, and to just go for it when there's a key change. And maybe just to kind of, you know, channel something on Australian pop idol. Um, but what what should we do now? Should we should we have a bit of a sing through or what? Well, I think I think that's a good idea. Yeah. I'm conscious of the fact we haven't gone through individual parts for the rest of the piece yet, yeah. but we will do that in the coming rehearsals. But it's probably a good idea to get a picture of the whole thing to give those people who are perhaps stronger singers a chance to sing it all the way through. Yeah. Don't don't worry if it's too hard at this point. We're going to be learning it still in little bits going forward as well. So we'll learn perhaps from letter B to letter C next and then the ending of the piece, which is not so hard. Yeah. Uh, but there's one note that I'd like to point out, depending on uh, which version of the score you've got, because I think this has been updated um, as is n- normal with new pieces of music. Sometimes little errors uh, creep into parts and things are changed. Yeah. And there is one of those at bar 61 for the basses, Ed, you'll be interested to hear this the notes that are printed in the old score yeah. uh, in bar 61 on the words on the word christmas are d and f and that should be e flat and f oh. and for those people who have been listening to the uh, recording they would have noticed that already that th- those notes are e flat and f and i believe there's a more recent version of the score where that's been fixed so uh, jump onto the website and download that if you need it but right. otherwise just get your pencil out and um, change it to an E-flat, which is what I've done. All right. Yeah, yeah. Beethoven was update, updating his scores all the time, right? Mozart didn't even turn up to the opening nights with the overture. You know, only on the opening night did they get the overture. <laughs> so, I mean, we're, you know, this is a normal part of the creative process. Great. And it, I'm sure it'll continue to evolve beyond the first performance. Yes, well, yes, that's as true. As usual. Yeah. So we're going to do a sing through. Well, yeah, let's have a sing through from the beginning. All right, we'll, let's do uh, it. Run the recording, and we'll all sing through. Good luck, everybody. Enjoy yes. yourselves. <laughs>
Ben, that was that was better. I, I feel like I had some wobbly stuff around the key change. I'm going to go away and practice that. But look, I, I feel like I'm starting to get a feel of the kind of arc of the piece. What do you reckon? It's a journey, Ed, and that's, <laughs> that's exactly what we want. We want people to build this up bit by bit, yes. become more confident as you go through. Yeah. And, you know, in a, in a week or two, you know, it'll, it'll start to become much, much easier. Yeah. So don't be afraid to encourage friends to um, get involved with this as well. You know, the more the merrier, the more people we can get involved, the merrier. Absolutely. Wouldn't it be great, Ben, to have, you know, some really young people joining in, some, you know, people in their 90s, 100, just as many people as you can get involved. I, I just think, you know, of this horrible, shocking year, if there's anything good to come out of it, then surely this Christmas Carol and this project has to be one of those things. Absolutely. Totally agree. Ed. Yeah. And that's the best thing about choirs. Perfect cross section of humanity, <laughs> all walks of life, all ages, all united through music. It's, it's the greatest. Ben, it's been a lot of fun and I'm looking forward to another rehearsal. So Vanessa's taking the next rehearsal. That's on the 23rd of November. That's at five o'clock in the same, same place. And in the meantime, I'm going to be looking up some recipes for boiled fruitcake. <laughs> Good idea. Come prepared. Come <laughs> prepared.